Welcome back. In this third of the three videos, we're going to talk about internet performance and how that is measured. So in the last video, just to refresh your memory, we were looking at the differences between the internet and the World Wide Web in terms of the World Wide Web being an application that runs on top of the internet, which was a network of networks. And in that World Wide Web, a lot of times you are transferring data back and forth. You are transferring web pages and images so that you can view them in your browser. So the question of internet performance is really about how fast do your web pages load and what goes into uh, figuring that out. So first we're going to learn about bandwidth. Bandwidth or throughput is the rate at which data is downloaded or uploaded in a network. And it can be measured in bits per second, kilobits per second, megabits per second. Um, usually you see it either in kilobits or megabits per second. Uh, here's an example of a test that you can use to measure your download speed. So I'm going to, or your bandwidth, I'm going to click on the link here and open it up. Right. So I am working from home today and I will run the test here and you can see that it is pretty much measuring my speed at, it says 10,000 kilobits per second or 10 megabits per second. If I run this again, you can see it's now closer to 11 and a half, almost 12 kilobits per second. But that's a measure of my throughput then, or the bandwidth that I have um, at home here. So let's take a look at what bandwidth is on a global scale. So bandwidth speeds vary across the globe depending on where you're at and what kind of internet access you have. The current global average is about 18.4 megabit speed download. Korea leads the world with 52.4 megabits per second and in the US the average is about 24.4 megabits per second. If you click on the map right there you'll be able to explore by country and within the United States what the average bandwidth speeds are. Broadband access is definitely an issue in terms of thinking about if you have access to the internet but you don't have broadband access where broadband referring to high speed internet service then that means that you may not be able to use the web as effectively or use the resources that are on the web as effectively. So if you have broadband that usually means that you have it through a cable or DSL modem and a DSL is that digital subscriber line one that's connected via your um, home telephone network. And you can see here the um, OECD, so the Organization for Economic Something Development, I forget what the C stands for, shows that there's about 72 percent broadband penetration in its members, so within the OECD countries, and you can see some of them listed there. You'll notice that a couple of them, um, Finland, Australia, Japan, Sweden, Denmark, Korea, even the United States, it's just barely over that 100% mark. So what that means is that there is more than one broadband connection for every person. So for example, I have a connection, I have multiple connections including my cable network here at home, I have um, an internet service plan for one of my tablets, and I also have um, cellular data plans you know for each of the phones that are in our house. So if you start to think about the different plans you have for different devices you can see how we're now getting over a hundred percent penetration. But you notice that many countries like if you go down to the last one there on the list Mexico doesn't even have 25 percent penetration for broadband yet so that means that they're using something if they have internet access because more than 25 percent of Mexico's population has internet access they are using something slower than broadband access. Um, and we just talked about that six countries including the US have over 100 percent penetration. Another term related to the internet performance is latency. So we just talked about bandwidth which is the throughput or the speed that you can upload and download information. Latency then is a measure of the time it takes a piece of data to reach its destination. So it's typically measured in milliseconds or thousandths of a second. And an activity that your teacher will ask you to do is to do this ping activity which will measure the latency of your network. So ping is a networking utility used by uh, network administrators to measure the latency on the internet. So what uh, you can do is you can go to this website centralops.net and use their ping utility to test the reachability of certain hosts. So if you click the image in the slides you'll be able to go there. 
Um, you can try various hosts like the Trinity College um, computer science server. You can try the main gateway to MIT. And you can try the mobile CSP website or other ones that you look at. So here I am and I'm going to select ping from the list of tools and then in the domain or IP address I'm just going to type in mit.edu and I'll leave the rest of it here and just click on go. So in the results table you can see a count of how many times they did it, the number of hops that it took in order to get there and then RTT is the routing time or the time it took for that signal to be sent and then for us to get an acknowledgement back that they received the signal. And you can see the um, average time in terms of milliseconds so there was on average 20 milliseconds for us to ping the MIT.edu server. You may using the other device or the other tool on the previous slide you may run out of free tests for your network per day so here's an alternative one that you can try as well if you're running out of free tests. So as a recap bandwidth and latency are two measures of internet performance Bandwidth is the throughput or how much data per second can be transferred in terms of uploading and downloading data. And latency refers to the amount of time it takes a piece of data to reach its destination.